With this intricate world in mind, we delve into the tale of a once isolated village tucked away in the snowy mountains of Eastern Europe. This village, long cut off from the rest of the world, found itself thrust into the chaos of the merging as the cosmic energies connected the realms. In this village, there was an old woman named Baba Yaga, a mythical figure from Slavic folklore. She was known to the villagers as a powerful and unpredictable witch, both feared and respected for her knowledge of ancient magic. As the merging occurred, Baba Yaga sensed the shift in the world and prepared to adapt to the new reality. Outside the village, a family of Bigfoot creatures roamed the snowy forests, keenly aware of the changes brought forth by the merging. Their leader, a wise and protective alpha named Gorak, sensed the growing power of Baba Yaga and the humans in the village. He gathered his family, ready to face the challenges and opportunities this new world would bring. Inside the village, the people struggled to understand the strange events that were unfolding. They turned to their wise elder, Ivan, who had lived in the village his entire life and knew the legends of the cryptids and mythical beings. Ivan, however, found himself at a loss, unable to provide the answers and guidance his people sought. As the days passed, the village began to experience the effects of the merging firsthand. Magical creatures and beings from the Feywild made their presence known, some curious and benign, while others were more sinister and dangerous. The villagers found themselves caught in a delicate balance, trying to protect their homes and maintain their way of life amidst the encroaching chaos. Baba Yaga, ever the opportunist, saw the merging as a chance to expand her power and influence. She began to explore the Feywild, seeking out new spells and arcane knowledge to bolster her magical abilities. The villagers, fearful of her growing power, turned to Gorak and his family of Bigfoot creatures for protection, despite their own reservations about the enigmatic beings. The unlikely alliance between the villagers and the Bigfoot family, forged in the face of the merging, led to tense and uncertain times. Trust was a rare commodity, and both sides eyed each other warily, even as they joined forces to confront the magical threats that plagued their lands. As the merging continued to shape the world around them, Baba Yaga, Gorak and the people of the village found themselves caught in a complex web of alliances, betrayals and the struggle for power. The great merging, though a time of upheaval and uncertainty, also served as a crucible, testing the mettle of all who lived in this new merged world. Gorak, the leader of the Bigfoot clan, had always been a wise and resourceful being. Before the merging, Gorak and his family lived a simple yet fulfilling life deep within the dense forests of the mountains. They were known to the locals as elusive and mysterious creatures, often spoken of in hushed tones around the village campfires. The family lived in harmony with nature, skillfully navigating the forest and using their size and strength to thrive. They were known to communicate with each other through a series of grunts, hoots and even the occasional whistle. Gorak, being the eldest and wisest, was the one who had taught them these sounds and signals. Additionally, they had the ability to speak the human language and could even telepathically communicate, albeit at a very basic level. Gorak's mate Nara, was a gentle but strong mother figure, nurturing their young while also teaching them the ways of the forest. She would often tell them stories of their ancestors and the ancient legends passed down from generation to generation. Our ancestors have roamed these lands for centuries, Nara would say, as the young ones listened with rapt attention. We have lived in harmony with the humans, the fae, and the other cryptids. We have all done our part to maintain the balance of the world. One evening, as the family gathered around their makeshift hearth deep in the forest, Gorak shared a tale that had been passed down through generations of Bigfoot. Long ago, he began, our kind lived alongside the humans, not hidden away in the depths of the forest. We would trade with them, sharing our knowledge of the land, and they would provide us with tools and trinkets from their world. 
Why did we stop trading with the humans, father? Asked their youngest, Yara, her eyes filled with curiosity. Gorak sighed, his deep voice resonating through the forest. The humans began to fear us, for they could not understand our ways. They spread rumors and tales of our ferocity, painting us as monsters to be hunted and feared. We had no choice but to retreat deeper into the wilderness, away from their prying eyes and sharp spears. Nara nodded in agreement, adding, but we have always kept a watchful eye on them, ensuring that they do not harm the delicate balance of nature. Our duty is to protect the forest and its inhabitants, even if it means living in the shadows. The family continued to share stories and tales, their voices weaving a tapestry of their proud and ancient heritage. They spoke of the lessons they had learned from their ancestors, the importance of respecting nature, and the value of living in harmony with all beings, even those who feared them. As creatures of the forest, they had learned of the underground worlds hidden to man. In this way, they were more wise than men. While humans might be more technologically advanced, the Bigfoot was spiritually ahead of them. As the night deepened, Gorak and his family huddled together for warmth. Their massive forms silhouetted against the flickering firelight. Despite the challenges they faced, there was a sense of peace in their forest home, a testament to the resilience and wisdom of their kind. Little did they know that their world was about to change forever with the merging, and that they would soon find themselves forging new alliances and facing unprecedented challenges in a world where the lines between myth and reality were forever blurred. Before the merging, Baba Yaga lived in a secluded forest, hidden deep within the Slavic wilderness. Her home, a hut standing on giant chicken legs, seemed to defy the laws of nature, imbuing the area with an eerie sense of otherworldliness. Baba Yaga was both feared and respected by the locals, who whispered tales of her dark magic, wisdom, and her ability to help or harm those who sought her out. One evening, as the last rays of sunlight retreated from the darkening forest, a young witch named Vasilisa approached Baba Yaga's hut, trembling with a mix of fear and determination. She sought knowledge from the ancient sorceress, hoping to gain the power she needed to protect her village from a terrible fate. Who dares to approach my home? Baba Yaga's voice echoed through the woods as her hut slowly lowered itself to the ground. It is I, Vasilisa, the young witch replied, trying to sound braver than she felt. I seek your wisdom and guidance for my village is in grave danger. Baba Yaga, intrigued by the girl's courage, invited her inside. As they sat around a cauldron bubbling with a mysterious potion, Baba Yaga began to share her past and the origins of her formidable reputation. Long ago, I was but a simple village girl, she began, but I had a gift a natural talent for magic and an insatiable thirst for knowledge. I wandered the land, seeking out ancient tomes and wise mentors who could teach me the secrets of their craft. In my travels, I discovered the forces of light and darkness that existed in the world, Baba Yaga continued. I learned that to master both, one must walk the thin line between them. And so I became a force to be reckoned with capable of both great kindness and terrible wrath. Vasilisa listened intently, her eyes wide with wonder. But why do the people fear you so, Baba Yaga? she asked. The old witch cackled, the sound echoing through the hut. Fear, my dear, is a powerful tool. Those who fear me think twice before crossing me or harming the balance of nature. My reputation keeps me safe and allows me to live a life free from the meddling of others. As the night wore on, Baba Yaga shared stories of her past, of the many challenges she had faced, and the countless lives she had touched, for better or worse. She spoke of the power that came with knowledge and the importance of understanding one's own strengths and weaknesses. Vasilisa, inspired by the tales of Baba Yaga's life, vowed to learn all she could from the ancient sorceress to protect her village and maintain the delicate balance of the world. Little did they know that their lives would soon be irrevocably changed 
by the merging, thrusting them into a new world where the borders between myth and reality would blur and create new challenges and opportunities for both. In the village, the elders gathered in the town hall, their faces etched with worry and determination. Gorak, the leader of the Bigfoot clan, joined them, representing his family and sharing their collective concerns about Baba Yaga and the merging. The villagers, still reeling from the strange events that had unfolded, were eager to find a solution and restore balance to their world. As they discussed various plans and strategies, a group of soldiers arrived, demanding information about the Bigfoot clan's whereabouts. The villagers, sensing the soldiers' skepticism, shared their stories of Baba Yaga, hoping to divert their attention from Gorak and his family. The soldiers, however, seemed more amused than concerned by the villagers' accounts and dismissed them as mere superstition. Unbeknownst to the soldiers, Baba Yaga's hut, hidden deep within the forest, was cloaked in a powerful enchantment that rendered it invisible to the untrained eye. Their search proved fruitless, and as the soldiers grew increasingly frustrated, they began to doubt the villagers' sanity. Eventually, the soldiers decided to abandon their search, leaving the village to its own devices. With the soldiers gone, the villagers and Gorak's clan breathed a collective sigh of relief. They resumed their planning, determined to confront Baba Yaga and restore balance to their world. Gorak, having respected Baba Yaga for her wisdom and power, was saddened to see her breaking her pledge to maintain the delicate balance of nature. The merging had granted her unprecedented access to the spirits that fueled her magic, allowing her to wield power that was never meant for the mortal world. As night fell, the village and Gorak's clan finalized their plans, ready to execute them the following day. They knew that confronting Baba Yaga would be no easy task, but their resolve was strong, and they were prepared to do whatever it took to protect their homes and the world they knew. As Gorak and his family returned to their hidden dwelling, they steeled themselves for the challenges that lay ahead. They knew that the fate of their village, their world, and even the balance of nature itself hung in the balance. And so, with heavy hearts and unwavering determination, they readied themselves for the battle that was soon to come. In the depths of her enchanted, hidden hut, Baba Yaga was hard at work, studying ancient scrolls and consulting with the spirits she had previously only been able to communicate with sporadically. The merging had granted her unfettered access to these otherworldly beings, and she was eager to exploit this newfound connection for her own purposes. Baba Yaga's ultimate goal was to attain a level of power and knowledge that would make her untouchable transcending the limitations of her mortal form. As she delved deeper into the realm of the spirits, she came face to face with entities she had revered and feared throughout her long life. Their presence both fascinated and terrified her, but she was unwavering in her quest for power. During her explorations, Baba Yaga encountered a powerful demon named Mordath. This enigmatic figure whispered dark secrets and forbidden knowledge into her ear, tempting her with promises of unimaginable power. Mordath told her of Cain, the immortal wanderer who was said to possess the blood of the gods within his veins. Intrigued by the prospect of harnessing this divine essence, Baba Yaga became obsessed with the idea of capturing Cain and using his blood in a dark ritual that would augment her own abilities. Mordath provided Baba Yaga with the necessary knowledge to perform this ritual, but he kept his true intentions hidden from her. He had his own reasons for wanting to see Cain's power drained and transferred to Baba Yaga, but he was careful not to reveal his motives. It seemed as though Mordath had a long-standing rivalry with Cain, and he was using Baba Yaga as a pawn in a game that spanned millennia. As Baba Yaga focused on her preparations, she was unaware of the alliance forming between Gorak's clan and the villagers. 
She was equally oblivious to the fact that she was being manipulated by Mordath, a sinister figure who would play a significant role in the events to come. As the various players moved towards their inevitable confrontation, the stage was set for a showdown that would change the course of history and shape the future of the newly merged world. As Baba Yaga returned to her hut, the village and Gorak's clan were ready and waiting, united in their determination to confront the ancient witch. As she approached, they could see that something was different about her, a wild, reckless glint in her eyes that was uncharacteristic of the cunning, calculated sorceress they knew. Baba Yaga's newfound power, though not as great as she believed, still made her a formidable foe. As she stepped forward, she sneered at the assembled villagers and Bigfoots, her voice dripping with contempt. You dare to challenge me, she hissed. I have communed with the spirits and gained powers beyond your comprehension. You are all but insects before me. Gorak, standing tall and resolute, responded in a deep, unwavering voice. Baba Yaga, you have broken your pledge to maintain balance. The merging has given you knowledge that was not meant for our world. You must be stopped. Baba Yaga laughed maniacally, the air crackling with dark energy as she raised her hands. Fools, you will all perish before me. With that, she unleashed a torrent of dark magic, sending bolts of energy hurtling toward the villagers and Bigfoots. Gorak's clan sprang into action, using their immense strength to deflect the magical barrage. The villagers, resourceful and quick-witted, had prepared traps and distractions to counteract Baba Yaga's dark magic. The battle raged on, both sides locked in a fierce struggle. Gorak fought valiantly, his powerful blows forcing Baba Yaga to retreat temporarily. The villagers used their clever tactics to disrupt and confuse the ancient witch, while the Bigfoots, displaying their uncanny ability to blend in with the forest, struck from the shadows with surprising agility. Is this all you've got, Baba Yaga? Gorak roared, his fists clenched in determination. Your new powers cannot save you from the strength and unity of our people. Baba Yaga snarled, her face twisted with rage. You think you have me cornered, but you have no idea of the true extent of my power. With a wave of her hand, a surge of dark energy erupted from the ground, knocking Gorak and the others off their feet. The battle was far from over, and as the dust settled, it was clear that Baba Yaga was not going down without a fight. The battle continued, with both sides landing powerful blows against each other. Baba Yaga, growing desperate, summoned twisted evil caricatures of animals to fight by her side. These dark creatures were malformed and grotesque, their very presence a testament to the depths of Baba Yaga's malevolence. As the villagers and Gorak's clan fought on, it became clear that their combined efforts were beginning to overwhelm Baba Yaga. In a last-ditch effort to escape, she conjured a black fire that engulfed her hut and began to spread rapidly throughout the forest. The villagers and Bigfoots tried desperately to extinguish the unnatural blaze, but their efforts were in vain. The fire seemed impervious to water and other conventional means and continued to consume the trees and plants in its path. As it burned, it left behind a trail of slimy black tendrils which coated the ground and emitted a foul odour that made the air almost unbreathable. Eventually, the black fire exhausted itself and the forest lay in smouldering ruin. Baba Yaga was long gone, having vanished into the darkness of the night. Gorak and the villagers surveyed the destruction, their hearts heavy with the knowledge that their homes and lives would never be the same. Knowing they had to act quickly, Gorak and the village leader met to discuss their next steps. They decided that for the safety of both humans and Bigfoots, it was best for the two groups to remain separated while the world adjusted to the new reality brought about by the merging. With a heavy heart, Gorak and his clan bid the villagers a temporary farewell, vowing to meet again once the balance had been restored. The villagers, in turn, expressed their gratitude for the Bigfoot's help and promised to continue their efforts to rebuild their lives and their home. As the two groups parted ways, a sense of hope lingered in the air, 
a testament to the bond they had forged in the midst of chaos and destruction. The world may have been forever changed, but their shared experience had created a connection that would not be easily forgotten. Cain watched the events unfold from a distance, his ancient eyes keenly observing the merging of the worlds and the chaos it wrought. He knew more than almost anyone on earth about what was taking place, for he had been alive when the worlds originally split, and now they were rejoining. Cain understood that the worlds had always been connected, and many more would merge in the coming centuries, a fact unbeknownst to the humans. Cain was immortal, unable to die, as the key to his mortality had been lost to the ages. He carried a deep resentment for his father, Adam, and the false god that had cursed him. He had long vowed to confront his father once and for all, to seek retribution for allowing this alien god to curse his own son. The thought of his inevitable reunion with his brother Abel also occupied Cain's mind. Though he had killed Abel millennia ago, he never truly hated him. Instead, his rage was directed towards his parents and the false god they worshipped. Cain knew that one day he would confront Jehovah, but he was also acutely aware of the god's immense power. Despite his might, Jehovah was not the original true source of all existence. He was not truly omnipotent nor omniscient. However, his power was still formidable enough to destroy the planet. As Cain pondered his future, he kept a watchful eye on the events transpiring around him. He sensed a connection between himself, Nahai, and Baba Yaga, as if their destinies were somehow intertwined. However, Cain was not one to welcome such ideas, and he would either destroy them or bend them to his will. A shadowy figure from his past lingered on the edges of his thoughts, a powerful rival who had once tried to sway Cain's actions long ago. This enigmatic presence was still determined to challenge Cain's plans, even after all these millennia. With each passing day, the ancient curse that bound him to his immortal existence grew heavier, but Cain's resolve to confront his past and reshape the future remained unbroken.